Welcome tonight to our lotion and potion class. Um, it's again part of the summer reading of, of fairy tales and folklore and all that. So I thought it'd be fun to put together some salves for you guys to embody betters for you to use. You all have the handout along with your kit. If you didn't get a kit, you've got the handout as a PDF in your email. And also, um, the ingredients, we're gonna make two different things tonight. We're gonna to make a body butter, and that will go in your little jar that you got right here. And then we're also making a dry skin salve that goes in the tins, okay? So to begin with, you're gonna to wanna to put all your ingredients that came in the big bag wrapped with a paper towel. That contains our ingredients of shea butter, fractionated coconut oil, and regular coconut oil. So it's got the shea butter. We used all of it up. That's why I couldn't make any more kits. It just went exactly to the 15 kits that we made. But you can get coconut oil at all different places. This is a good buy um, right there from Costco. And then the liquid fractionated oil, this is from HEB in the, you know, that area, the bulk area, the personal care area, where you can get your essential oils. It's right by these, below this essential oils. And you're gonna look for liquid, liquid coconut oil. What that means is that it has been cleaned out. It's been melted and then sieved very nicely. So any kind of lumps are not gonna be there. If I were to use just straight coconut oil in the dry skin salve, and I've done it before when I've run out of that, um, as I'm smoothing it on my skin, I get these little bumps of coconut oil that's not refined and not melted. So that's why we use the liquid coconut oil in conjunction with the other stuff, okay? And then we're also using beeswax. I usually get my beeswax from Gretchen's Bee Farm over in Seguin. And if you've never taken a trip over there, it's very fun. She has all sorts of, it's a husband and wife team. They they have different hives all over the area, all over um, you know, this area from east to west, different counties and stuff. And she's able to, they're able to get different flavors of honey from that because the bees are, um, the bees only get, are attracted to certain flowers and stuff. This we got online. It's um, a little bit easier to use. It doesn't come in a brick like the other beeswax and it's the pellets that you have in your little kit, okay? So either one of those works. Frankly, the pellets melt really nicely, but they don't smell, they don't smell as intense as Gretchen's beeswax does. Hers smells phenomenal. So to begin with, I'm gonna switch my camera to the pan. Go ahead and dump all of your ingredients from the big bag into your pan, okay? Now we're just going to let that simmer. We kind of, yeah, just open up the Ziploc and pour it into this bowl. I've already done it. I've had to refrigerate it to thicken it up in order to beat it. And so I ha I've already had to do it. So I'm just showing you an empty bowl right now. But you're going to be melting um, you want, and the shea butter will be the last thing to melt. So you'll have to cook it. Um, you don't need to stir it, but stirring certainly helps it go quicker. So you could take a little spatula and just stir in there and like press some of the chunks to the side and get it all. What you don't want is you don't want any of the moisture coming in over the top, okay? You don't want any water involved with this. One of the aspects of these two recipes that we have is that because they do not contain any distilled water, there is no chance of molding, okay? You're not gonna get mold um, even if it's left out on the counter. The only thing that could happen, and it would probably take about a year, is that the oils could go rancid if you don't use it. 
But other than that, if it doesn't contain water, you don't know, need a preservative. A lot of times we, um, I'm even gonna turn that down farther. We think that we need to put all these ingredients in because that's what's listed on the tubes that we get at the store. But honestly, the less ingredients, the better. So really, it's a three ingredient body butter plus your essential oils. And that's, a, that's the key here. So once this is melted and all your things are melted, you're gonna take this and it's about, see how much it made? You're going to take that and put it in, you're gonna carefully lift it out. And this might take you guys a few minutes. Again, you don't want any water coming in on the inside. And you just take it out. And I poured mine into another bowl because um, putting a hot bowl into the fridge will take a long time for it to cool down. Okay, if you don't have another bowl, that's just fine. Um, just leave it on the counter for a little while. Probably what's gonna happen is I made mine about two hours ago. I made this mixture about two hours ago and, I, and you cannot, it's ready to mix and whip when it turns opaque and the top layer has a skin on it, okay? So I rushed this and put it in the freezer for you guys to make sure that it would be solid enough to whip. And it is, it's getting really melty again. So hopefully I haven't let it melt too far. So I think I am gonna just stick this in the fridge while we do the next one. So once you have melted your first batch, just take it out and set it aside. And you can deal with it after class. You don't have to deal with it right now. Um, let me put that in the fridge real quick. Okay, so now um, if you have transferred your ingredients, you're going to take, we're moving on to the dry skin balm. Make sure the water does not go up over the lip. That's pretty important. And we're gonna put our beeswax in here. Now beeswax gets really sticky when it's um, melted and it starts to harden again. It just clings to the bowl. So it's really easy to clear off just by uh, sticking it in hot water or just scraping off the little pieces. And then what I'll do is I'll stick this in the microwave and then wipe it down with a paper towel just to get the remnants of the wax out of there. It's kind of like cleaning up after a candle. Beeswax is used for candle making, and so you know that it's a strong wax. So I've got this, it's gonna melt. It does take a little while to melt. And um, during, while it's doing that, I'm gonna talk. So I'm gonna switch off the camera because there's nothing really to look at. I'll switch back when it's starting to melt. Okay. So, a couple things about your handout. Let's go through with this. Okay. So, on this first one where it says, it talks about Humble Bee and Me. She is my favorite person to look up on the internet. She's very scientific. She used to sell her things and then decided she just wants to be a promoter. And she, she figures out formulas. She does use a lot of very, not difficult things to obtain, but you'd want to make, in order to buy something, you'd want to make a lot of it because you've got this big bottle of something. But her basic recipes are phenomenal, okay? She, her Instagram account and also her videos, her YouTube videos, so for every blog post that she does with a new recipe, she also does a video with it. And so those are two things that I just love to watch. Um, I read the blog and then I go watch the video. And she, if you just start with her basic, um, if you go to her website, um, up across the top, on, across the toolbar, there's like just starting out or beginner videos to watch. And that's what you need to look for. Anyway, so that's just awesome. All that stuff is there. I've learned a lot by her she makes her own, oops, that's my cell phone or someone's cell phone? That's my cell phone probably. 
sorry. Um, so going back to our beeswax, it's starting to get softened, but they're still bead shaped. So it's gonna take a while. When, you're, when you've got a big block of beeswax, you can chip off little pieces or you can even shave it if you need to. And that, that can get you small slivers instead of you know, the chunks. Um, the next one is the, the homemade drive skin salve. And I have a recipe that's very similar to this and I've sold it for several years and now I'm done selling it, but it's pretty much the same thing. Tonight we are going to be putting in about, I think I did 10 drops of, um, 10 drops of tea tree oil, which is Melaleuca is, is another name that you might be familiar with. Tea tree oil smells delicious. It smells antiseptic. It smells wonderful. So there's that. And also, um, we've got 10 of the Lang Lang oil. Um, this oil smells a little fruity and is good. Um, let me see if someone is trying to get in. <coughs> Debbie, did you say Lang Lang oil? Yeah, it is Y-L-A-N-G, mm -hmm. twice. Y-L-A-N-G. I don't know how to pronounce that. Yeah, Lang Lang. I bet the Y is silent. So in, you've got two cups of oils, essential oils in your kit. One's orange colored or yellow colored, and the other is clear, okay? The clear one, we're going to be putting in the drive salve. That's your tea tree oil and the Lang Lang, okay? The other one is orange oil, lemon oil, and the Lang Lang. Okay, so, and that's 15 drops of each of those. So you have 45 drops of essential oils in your batch of body butter, which is quite a bit, but um, when it's smoothed on the skin, it doesn't, it's, it's okay, it's fine. Um, okay. So I am letting the beeswax melt. And it always happens that when I pour the beeswax into the oil, fractionated coconut oil, um, it gets this solidified thing. So that's why I have my other bowl in, the, in here being warm, because I want the essential oils when I pour that in to be a little bit warm, or else we get this thing that we've got to then melt further. So if you're ready, you guys are all set up. I'm gonna switch this over again to the pan, and we'll just watch it for a minute. I'm sorry, I realized I had my dishwasher going. That was probably a big noise in the background tonight. I just shut that off. So can you guys see this? It's not quite melted. Let's go ahead and stir it and see if we can melt it faster. I'm gonna pour my coconut oil in the other bowl. And you really do wanna scrape out every little last bit because it's all pre-measured and you want every ounce or grams or fraction of a gram. Okay, so I'm gonna still continue to work on melting the last of these beads and get it off of my spatula. See how it got on my spatula? Now I have to kind of remelt all that. And that's kind of what's going to happen when we put it in the coconut oil. Remember, we use fractionated coconut oil so that we won't have any coconut lumps. Okay, that's looking pretty good. 
Almost ready to combine the two. Okay, so what I don't want to do is drop water into the bottom of this big bowl because of the drip underneath of this bowl. So I'm going to take it and wipe it down. And then I'm going to pour it into here. Oh, it didn't do it. That's good. Okay. So I'm going to take that off the heat. Right now it's clear, but it's when it, it cools, it's going to solidify and it will be uh, this color. See, it solidifies into something like that. It's very nice. Okay. So I'm going to take the camera over to this other spot. It'll just be a minute and I just might shut off my camera or I'll, I will make you guys dizzy. Hang on. Actually, I'll pause the video. Okay, so we've got our concoction that we melted first of all and we've taken it out of the fridge. It has a, a, an opaque appearance to it. Um, there's a skin on top, but it's still kind of juicy underneath. And then you know how you get pudding that sets quicker on top? That's kind of what we're looking for. And then um, let me open this up and show you. We want a whipped state. So we've got to incorporate some air into this. So what I would like to do, I added my essential oils, the orange, the lemon, and the Lang Lang to it. And I'm going to whip it, but I don't think you guys need to listen to it. So I think I will mute myself while we, I do that. Okay. Um, Okay, so it's not whipping up as much as I want. I mean, it's looking like it's on its way, it's a little thicker. I'm gonna stick it in the fridge again for a minute, maybe even the freezer. While we uh, continue talking. Okay, so here is the dry skin rub. Has yours solidified? I mean, does it look opaque like this? Smell it. You it doesn't look, it does, mine doesn't look like that yet. <laughs> okay, okay. Yeah, so it is pretty solid. It would take still, I leave mine out for a day, okay? Just to make sure it's really solid before I put the lid on. I just don't want any condensation underneath it, um, underneath the lid. So I leave it uncapped for a while. Okay, so back to um, our notes. If you look at the recipe, the unicorn whipped butter, that's where we're at. You can add certain things. It talks about adding chai seed oil, cocoa butter, 
or other similar ingredients with antioxidant properties. Cocoa butter will make it smell like, if, along with the coconut oil and coconut butter, it will make it more beachy smell, you know? And th so then you have to be kind of careful with what oils that you want to put with it. Another one that's good is mint. Mint oils with cocoa butter works really well. Oops, I'm getting oil spilled on this. Okay, so that's just the directions for this. She, she put, she divided up her recipe into three bowls, put three or four different colors in those three bowls, and then whipped it up, and then put it in a piping bag, and it just never got to that stage for me. So I just um, left it clear. I don't want any coloring on my body butter. I don't even want any shimmer on my bit of body butter. Um, this will fill two jars. So you're going to have to find another container to put it in. Um, I put it in, where's my canning jar? So I did divide it in half. Um, one recipe, you'll do a jar and about half of this. And then you stir this. I keep this one in the fridge, and this one's fine um, out. If it's in the fridge, it gets too hard again, it solidifies, and then you can't spread it on your body very easily. So this you want to use like at night when you're going to bed. People like to keep this in their fridge though because it gives them a cooling down effect when they put it on their skin. It just got a little hard for me, and it solidified too much. So I'm hoping this next one, this next batch will be a little fluffier. Okay, the next recipe is the moisturizing handmade body wash. And again, this has no water in it, okay? So it's just basically liquid Castile soap. You can find Castile soap in the same aisle in, on HEB as everything else. Um, honey is a great, uh, has a lot of nutrients in it, and so that was added and then moisturizing oil. So you can use olive oil, avocado, almond. Almond is a very light oil and so is um, the avocado. Almond oil is a lot more expensive. So, um, and again, coconut oil is not good because it solidifies, but fractionated coconut oil will work. Again, it is probably more expensive. This, this jar is like 13 bucks. So, you know, you can imagine in the cooking aisle, you can find avocado oil that's a lot less expensive than that, okay. Um, and then again, essential oils. And then it talks about all the different oils, or essential oils. There's a wake-up wash. You could use that and, and use those flavors or those scents in this um, body wash. And that's the, the peppermint and rosemary is very invigorating. Okay. Uh, same again, there's a homemade body wash recipe with the same things. Okay. Um, okay. So then there's a foaming hand so soap. This one does call for distilled water and it calls for distilled soap. So at some point you may find that it is getting a little moldy if you don't go through it quick enough. So you only want to make it in a small batch, just one batch at a time to make sure that you don't get any um, mold growing in your little container. Okay. And all it is is the pump, the pump's the special thing. The pump is what makes it foamy. And it's obviously it's just soaks, but it's watered down, so it can go through the pump okay. Um, my daughter makes this marble or granite cleanser that is just awesome. It makes the granite just shine by using rubbing alcohol, water, and she uses her dish soap because she likes the smell of her whole kitchen smelling like her dish soap. So she uses a good Dawn um, detergent and then. Um, instead of Castile, but you could certainly use Castile if you want to keep it organic, okay? And then the last thing is that you can combine, you can put different scents into these cleaners. 
um, a lot of people will take essential oils and put on their filter on their vacuum or their wet mop before they, they mop their home because they like the smell of it. Okay. That's it as far as the handout goes. I'm going to grab that bowl, that bowl and see if it's going to fit better. Okay. So here we are back. I'm going to mute it again so we don't have to, you don't have to hear me. Um, That was quick and easy. It, it has gone into that um, like whipped cream stage. That's what it looks like. And so now I'm ready to load it up in my jar. Move this guy out of the way. There we go. When you're mixing it, it will melt more. The beating, the beaters heat up. And so it has a tendency to melt. And that's why we use cold beaters and cold bowls when you're beating something. The beaters actually cause a problem. Okay, that's about as far uh, into the container that you wanna go. We've got to put the lid on and that will take up the extra room. So there's one. The leftover, I will just put into a clean jar. You guys probably save those wee yogurt cups would be a good choice for that. Although you don't have a lid, you'd have to just put a, um, what, saran wrap or something over it. Okay, and it looks like it's gotten a little hard around the edges. So I really caught it at the right moment. You're just gonna have to test yours and see when a good time to pull it out and whip it. And then you can always put it back in. You can always pull it out and let it thaw. And that's what I did while we were talking earlier and it just went to, it melted too much. So I had to put it back in. You'll, you'll find what works best um, to be able to whip your body better. And on that note, we're all done. Do you guys want me to show you what it's like on my skin? So there is still some that's quite melted. See, it, it blends in really well. I don't know that I would wear this during the day, but boy, at night, I think I would smother it on my arms. I find my elbows need it, and it's, it's a great scent. Oh, it smells good. Okay, so then I'm gonna take these. My lids are a little bit different. I forgot to get lids from the library today. These ones I just got, these tins are in the organizing section of Hobby Lobby on the craft wall. Well, in our Hobby Lobby, you walk in and you go all the way back by the scrapbooking place and up against that far wall. It's not the back wall, it's the side wall at, towards the back because all their organization stuff. And the, these are for beads. These are supposed to hold beads and things. Um, but they work for these containers. They work really well. So you can get them there. So you don't have to buy a big box on Amazon and have 